In East Central Ohio, fertile farmland produces primarily corn and soybeans in the shadow of the Appalachian foothills. Bringing RTK GPS technology to this terrain has been a challenge for Tim Norris, owner of Ag Infotech, a technology and agronomy consulting firm based in Gambier, Ohio. He successfully implemented an RTK tower network over the past few years and is now integrating a cores-based offering to help cover areas where RTK tower coverage is impractical. In the first of this two-part video series, Tim shares the reasons why customers are demanding RTK-level GPS correction. Well, I've got a lot of growers that uh, basically have a need for RTK. Um, you know, one of the biggest needs that we see with RTK is if you're wanting to strip till and then come back and have that repeatability to be able to plant your seed right on top of that strip where you put your fertilizer band. Um, <clears throat> a lot of the strip till toolbars aren't as big as the corn planter, so maybe you'll have a 12 row strip till toolbar, but you have a 24 row corn planter, so they're mismatched. Or you might have a six row strip till bar. In my case, that's what I have, and I have a 12 row uh, corn planter. Um, I can't pull a 12 row strip till bar, so we're, we're having to have mismatched implements. So that's probably the biggest need that we're seeing for RTK. Uh, another need that we're seeing is uh, post spraying beans and post spraying corn. Um, you know, you're able to go down through those uh, rows and not run over any, any crops and not damage any crops as you're going through a second time. Especially with beans, <clears throat> if you, uh, OSU's done some studies and, you know, you're, you're talking uh, on 90 foot booms, you can lose eight tenths of a bushel per acre just by going through that field again. Uh, so if you can travel on the same tracks, that's just going to help you uh, you know, save you know, eight tenths of a bushel by driving through the exact same track when you sprayed. So there's a big need for RTK there as well. Um, <clears throat> a couple places uh, you know, th that people are using it as well is I, I only have one corn planter. I don't farm that many acres that uh, I, I have one corn planter. I plant corns and soybeans both with that planter. And uh, we double back um, to make 15 inch rows. So it saved me from having to buy a second planter for soybeans. Um, we'll plant it one time with RTK and then we'll come back and move it over 15 inches and plant it with RTK again and we'll have 15 inch beans. So um, again, that you know, might not be for everybody, but that's just another example of how we're using it. And um, in our operation, personally, it uh, you know saved me from buying a twenty thousand dollar drill or another corn planter that you know for specifically for beans on fifteen inch rows. So um, there's all kinds of creative ways people are using this. Uh, got a guy that's using it in a solid no-till situation, and I didn't really think RTK would probably ever fit this grower, but he ended up with three systems. And basically, what he's wanting to do with it is to keep his soybean rows. He's got plants 15 inch soybeans and he wants to keep those rows off his corn row because he's noticed a decrease in, in uh, yield and a decrease in his stand where he plants through that corn row. So he plants RTK on his corn, comes back, moves the thing over uh, seven and a half inches and plants RTK soybeans and then his corn stalk is right always in the center of that, that row. In part two, Norris will discuss his plans for adding a cores-based RTK service and show how the technology works in the cab. For PrecisionAg.com, this is Paul Schrempf.